If the speed of the current fastest Tesla car is 408 kilometers an hour and the Dragon re-entry capsule is over 27,000 kilometers an hour in orbit, the changes in Starbase are actually measured by minutes. It's not exaggerated in the case if your house is near Starbase. You fall asleep at night, then you wake up and everything seems to be different. Yeah, so this even shocked NASA's Artemis team. Find out what we're talking about as we get into today's episode of Alpha Tech. The April 20th event reminds the NASA team about a similar one that happened last year at Kennedy Space Center Pad 39B. Remember when the Artemis 1 moon rocket blew out part of the infrastructure of the pad? It seems to be luckier than SpaceX's counterpart because it tolerates a thrust of half of the thrust of the 33 Raptor engines. In addition, the NASA team also has more time to wind down between the two Artemis missions while they keep busy with tasks in terms of repairs and upgrades. But it's not the same for Elon's employees who are always racing against time to prepare for the upcoming second flight test and the Artemis 3 alike. Thanks to all of Starbase's employees for their tireless efforts in working 24-7. So far, the orbital launch mount, the Achilles heel of the launch site, currently has been closer to complement more than ever. The first image of the pad after the explosion was disastrous. OLM got a sizable hole and the image also pointed at some tough repair work ahead for the SpaceX team. Moving now into July, that hole's been covered and the reinforcements were put in deep into the ground to strengthen the soil. There's also a new feature called the Deluge System, which helps to improve the resistance ability of the infrastructure of the dramatic thrust of Starship. On July 17th of this year, the very first test with water of the water-cooled stainless steel frame diverter plate, a core part of that system, underneath the orbital launch mount, has been showcased. A good luck sign for Starship stages, which may happen later this month. The repair and upgrade process has been happening as well, just as planned, and that looks like a confident nonverbal response to the previous incorrect assessments about the long recovery timeline of the Starship pad. Sometime after the April 20th event, many questions arose about how long it would take to repair the Starship's pad. The public mostly supposed that this timeline could be much longer than the 39B because of the damage sustained to the SLS's launch pad wasn't as serious. There's two reasons for this difference. The gap between the rocket's thrust and then the structure of each one. The flame trench is a structure that's designed exclusively for the pad suffering the superpower launches to deflect plume exhaust away from the pad during liftoff. NASA built a flame trench for their Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39B, but SpaceX doesn't have anything like that. In theory, the amount of time spent to fix and upgrade the Starship's launch site could take more than a year, not to mention the different tasks associated with the build sites of the other factories. However, the reality is quite unique. Although the accident in NASA's pad happened earlier, SpaceX is going to be able to catch NASA by repair and upgrade speed. And based on an ever-changing Starbase like nowadays, it might be true that SpaceX could overcome its coworker in a relatively short span of time. Along with the hustle and bustle at the launch complex site, the building site also never sleeps. In the latest news, the new mega bay is continually being constructed and it's now well through its fourth level. The installation of the elevator started as well. More amazingly, in the last month, they lifted Section 2 of Level 2, according to Zach Golden. Seems like SpaceX may be averaging one section every two days if the wind participates. Comments like that show us that people are unbelievably confident with how things are going on the Starship rocket production. And that's true. Talking about the time SpaceX's team spent building a rocket, no one else comes close. On the whole, designing and building a rocket can take anywhere from 5 to 15 years depending on the type of that rocket. For example, super heavy lift launch vehicles like the Saturn V took 5 years from design to launch. For the SpaceX launch system, it lasted more. Its development began in 2011, but the rocket had to wait roughly 10 years to be assembled for the first time at the Kennedy Space Center, and the first launch of SLS was last year in the frame of the Artemis I program. Comparatively speaking, from 2016 to date, SpaceX gave birth to 31 Starship spacecraft and 8 boosters, not including Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Over the last 7 years, 
SpaceX's CEO has continuously been enhancing the capacities of factories to cut down on the manufacturing time of rockets. One more interesting tidbit. According to the newest videos related to Starbase update, SpaceX is eventually on the threshold of their third test flight. Although the second one hasn't happened yet, we saw ships 28 and 29 residing in High Bay while the payload base section of ship 24.2 got completed as well as both booster 9 and 10 in preparation for the testing. Aiming at the required amounts of rockets, Starship has been stretched to the max, so several tasks were able to conclude this past week. As for the future, we hope that Elon's goal of getting 50 rockets up in the air every three days actually comes true. This isn't the first time the NASA Artemis team has underestimated the ability of a young private company like SpaceX. They visited Starbase twice and were absolutely overwhelmed by everything Elon had done. In the first Starbase trip a year ago, SpaceX enhanced NASA's belief in terms of its decision about selecting a reliable supporter for their missions. Talking about the Starbase launch site, in under a year, Elon turned a dirt lot and a fraction of a launch mount into the most complex in spaceflight's history, including the largest cryogenic tank farm ever built for a rocket, which was completely different from NASA's single launch tower that cost NASA almost a billion dollars for a decade's worth of construction. Starship's launch hardware also caught NASA's attention. Almost six months later, the team came back to Starbase again and saw the incredible changes in everything. Starship was more powerful and promising than last time they were there. But the most impressive thing here is inside the build site tents, and that's due to the massive Starship Raptor V2 engines. They said, for the first time, we see the Raptor 2s empty. And that means they were absolutely overwhelmed by the simplification of the Raptor V2 as an alternative to the Christmas tree version that came out before. On the same day, there was a picture of the NASA team in the front of the Booster 7 in Mega Bay. On top of that, Elon shared a picture of the 33 integrated engines, each of which would produce 230 metric tons by force. By the way, this happened in front of several guests who also witnessed the entire event. Since its inception, SpaceX has actively publicized the majority of their operation, along with their failures, as a way to provide a real overview to its wide range of capacity. From the last visit to today, the Artemis team has many times gifted the SpaceX team the compliment for their intensely crazy speed of infrastructure upgrades and Elon's mindset that's leaps and bounds ahead of our time. Thanks to Starbase and the Artemis team, because one thing's for sure, all of us want to be able to see the Starship HLS vehicle complete their mission as soon as possible. The success of Artemis 1 launch has propelled NASA's SLS to become the most powerful rocket ever to orbit. But its crown cannot endure forever. After over a decade of construction, SLS has revealed its inefficiency and sluggishness due to an outdated and cumbersome technical program. At this point, if we were to choose a candidate to replace LS, it can only be SpaceX's Starship. But why? Why is Starship so much better than NASA's SLS? The Space Launch System is a federal government endeavor aimed at developing a super heavy lift vehicle with the capability to launch large payloads in space. The program that contractors are currently working on for NASA originated as a way to salvage technology and employment opportunities from two other canceled programs. The subsequent issues faced by SLS also stem from this origin. President Barack Obama's decision to terminate the Constellation program led to bipartisan discontent in Congress. In exchange for the commercial crew program, NASA committed to constructing a heavy lift rocket, thus giving rise to the Space Launch System, utilizing technology and components from both Constellation and the Space Shuttle. The primary intent was not only to just launch payloads in space, but also to provide employment opportunities for constituents and fat contracts for campaign contributors. Why are they called fat contracts? NASA employs a cost-plus contracting approach with its contractors, which essentially involves providing funds for the project and covering any additional costs that exceed the budget. However, this funding mechanism does have its drawbacks, as it provides little incentive for contractors to adhere to schedules and budgets. Delays often result in increased compensation for contractors. NASA's been spending approximately $1.5 billion of the taxpayers' dollars annually since 2011 on SLS development. Despite assuring contractors of ample resources within reasonable budgets, suspicions arise about potential irregularities behind the scenes. The main contractor for the SLS project is Boeing, which has received the majority of the project's funding. 
On the other hand, Starship emerged as an innovative endeavor conceived within the visionary realm of SpaceX. In fact, SpaceX's history with super heavy vehicles begins with Tom Muller, one of the company's first employees and a propulsion engineer by profession. In the mid-2000s, Muller bought a BFR rocket engine at his rocket club, the Reaction Research Society. However, the BFR vehicle didn't gain any popularity until 2012 when Elon hinted that a huge rocket called the Mars Colonial Transporter would soon become one of SpaceX's major vehicles. Finally, Elon revealed that SpaceX's plans during the 2016 International Astronautical Congress Summit Originally named the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, it was later changed to BFR in 2018 before Musk renamed it as Starship. Elon's leadership and the company's history of successful endeavors, including the Falcon 9, have positioned SpaceX as a pioneer in space exploration and laid the groundwork for the audacious design of the Starship. Although SLS was planned in 2010, earlier than Starship, which was merely just a concept back then, it still had enough foundation to be compared with SLS and even Falcon Heavy. The initial effort aimed at a heavy lift orbital vehicle and nearly comparable with payload capacity to those lunar rockets. If you've been following SpaceX from its early days, you surely can't forget the statement made by former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden back in 2014 when he sarcastically commented on the Falcon Heavy rocket. Let's be very honest. We don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. The Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about. It's on the drawing board right now. SLS is real. The result was that Falcon Heavy was successfully launched in 2018. It's now five years later, and its successor, the Starship, is almost ready. As you can clearly see from both histories, SLS was created as a government incentivized program with the aim of collaborating with international space agencies and generating employment opportunities, whereas Starship was constructed as an innovative project to revolutionize space travel. In a transformative industry like this one, innovation is everything. In the context of innovation, let's delve into the distinct features of Starship and SLS. Starship's impressive stature reaches 120 meters, making it the tallest rocket among all the rockets in the world. This propulsion system employs a combination of liquid oxygen and methane to generate high-speed hot gas, resulting in an astonishing 17 million pounds of thrust during launch. This thrust is twice as powerful as the thrust capability of SLS. Notably, SpaceX's Starship is fully reusable, a goal nearly all modern-day rockets pursue. In contrast, SLS can't be reused in any capacity, leading to infrequent launch potential as well as high costs for redeveloping an entire rocket from scratch. Furthermore, NASA's development approach for the SLS follows a traditional product development path. It involves a lengthy period of sequential linear stages. While this may ensure continuity, it also consumes a massive amount of time. Sustainable space exploration might demand something bigger, better, faster, and more cost-effective. NASA doesn't seem to provide on that front. On the other hand, with SpaceX, you'll notice that failure is seen as a success. The mindset is to fail quickly and find solutions rapidly. SpaceX teams don't formulate strategies for months on whether something will work or not. They experiment, they fail, they observe, and then they iterate. They continue to test and refine until a robust working model is achieved. Elon even celebrates rocket explosions and emergency landings. He knows that these missteps yield insights that lead to eventual success. This iterative approach has allowed SpaceX to gain the upper hand as they repeatedly iterate toward an innovative design for deep space travel that's faster and much more cost-effective. In contrast, NASA doesn't embrace much risk with SLS. While SpaceX is testing components, materials, and processes, NASA's utilizing parts and design blueprints from previous models for manufacturing. Right now, SpaceX is preparing for its second launch this year, whereas SLS continues to face multiple delays and challenges. It remains uncertain whether it can meet the deadline for Artemis II. Is SpaceX the suitable choice for more replacement? Evidently, the allure of Starship extends beyond reusability, encompassing cost-effectiveness and unprecedented capabilities that set it apart as a superior choice compared to SLS. Currently, the space launch system costs about $2 billion to launch. Meanwhile, Elon's predicted that Starship may cost as little as $10 million a flight and will launch hundreds of times before it even carries people. SLS aims to bring the cost down to $1 billion a launch. 
But who would want to spend a billion dollars to launch anything on NASA's monster rocket except for the space agency? The Space Force certainly doesn't want anything to do with Space Launch System. Colonel Douglas Pentecost, a senior rocket acquisition official with the Space Force, is quoted as saying, It's a capability right now that we, the DOD, don't need. We have the capability that we need at the affordability price that we have, so we're not interested in some partnership with NASA on the SLS system. It's not going to get any better in the future. The military and commercial customers have the Falcon 9 and the Falcon Heavy to launch payloads. Eventually, the SpaceX Starship will be able to toss heavy payloads into space at a fraction of the Space Launch System's cost. The SLS was years behind schedule and billions of dollars over budget before it launched the successful Artemis 1 mission. But Artemis 2, which will launch a crew of astronauts around the moon, will occur no earlier than late next year, two years after Artemis 1. Artemis 3, scheduled for no earlier than late 2025, a year after Artemis 2. Besides, the SLS is very challenging to build, another impediment to commercialization. NASA and Congress, which funds it and its programs, are faced with a painful choice. They'll continue to swallow hard and fund the space launch system. After all, Congress imposed SLS on NASA. Congress continued to insist that the heavy lift rocket will be part of the Artemis returns to the moon program, expenses be damned. This legislative body would be hypocritical to suddenly discover that the SLS is a money pit just at the moment when it's inclined to cut the federal budget. NASA continues to pay for unwise decisions made over a decade ago. This space agency needs to act sooner rather than later. Until Starship successfully flies, they'll have another option for their program. It won't be long. We'll soon witness how successful the Starship's going to be. And that's all for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.